Bruce Bagamil has written a book, um, Biological Exuberance, where he has documented that over 1,500 species of animals show some form of homosexual behavior. None of them studied as rigorously or as well as, as uh, we've studied rams. Sexual behavior is of great interest to sheep farmers. They only use one ram to breed 50 to 100 ewes. And if that one ram is not performing, if that's a shy breeder, as they call it, um, it has economic consequences. So our research really started as a collaboration with a sheep station in, in Idaho. A, s a subset of those animals are given what we call sexual partner preference tests. That's really a choice test. We put them in with two males and two females and let them make a choice of which one they want to interact with, mate with, uh, mount, that kind of thing. So uh, it really takes, and then that, that test is repeated again in, in a second year to make sure that their behavior and their, their preferences are not changing over time. So what we found was uh, when we looked at the brains of these rams, uh, there's a cluster of cells or neurons in a part of the brain called the preoptic area, which is known to be involved in, in uh, regulating sexual behaviors. Um, the cluster was larger in female-oriented rams than in male-oriented rams. Um, and, and it was also larger in female-oriented rams than in ewes. Male-oriented rams and ewes had uh, a, a cluster that was about the same size. Anyway, that says to us that there's a so, an association beso between the size of this area and uh, uh, the sexual preference of the sheep. What we've done is look at fetal rams to see whether the sex difference in the brain area is present before the animals are born, before they've had any interaction with any other animals, before they've been able to behave or show any behaviors. We reasoned that maybe if we look towards the end of gestation that we might see a fully formed brain area that, that would uh, correspond to the one that we see in the adult. So we did this, and, and actually our hunch proved to be correct. Uh, by 130 days of gestation, of a 150-day gestational period, there is an SDN, which is called the sexually dimorphic nucleus. That's the brain area I'm talking about. And it's present in the, the brain of the fetal animal. So that means it develops before the animal was born. That lets us think that, that it's the, the SDN that comes first and it then influences the behavior uh, as the animal grows. All the evidence that we have point to there being a biological influence on the development of, of the brain area and by inference on the development of the behavior. There has been some research on rearing. You might you know, rams are reared in all male groups, so you might think it's sort of a boarding school effect. But there's been some research on that, and, and actually it doesn't matter if they're reared with other males, reared with females, or reared alone. There's still a proportion of animals that so show same-sex behaviors. I think what I'd like people to understand is that sexual behaviors in many species, and rams being the one that I study, uh, are varied. Uh, there's not just one type of sexual behavior, that being oriented male to female or female to male, that when you really stop and look, test the animal's behaviors, there's quite a bit of variation. And it's not just situational or one-time kind of affairs, that there can actually be uh, attractions for same sexes that are as enduring as opposite sex attractions.
this is a behavior that, that occurs naturally and it's a variation that occurs naturally.